Uh, I'm only doing this video because uh, Empress, which is one of the followers of this channel, uh, wanted me to talk about this, but we're now finding out that Terrence Crawford and Canelo Alvarez are both free agents and have been released from their contracts from PBC. Uh, it was reported today by Mac, Mike Capriger again. Sometimes you got to be careful when it's when it's him reporting this stuff because he likes to be first. So he'll report a lot of things that end up not being true. Uh, but they came to a mutual agreement that they wanted to part ways, which is, I guess, what is the case. And also not too long after that, it's followed up that Terrence Crawford is now a free agent as well. Uh, I'm not sure why anyone would be surprised or shocked by this. PBC is a very bad company. This is a company like most companies today is more uh, worried about its appearance to the public more so than its own success. Again, this is a company that pushes fights that nobody's asking for, nor is there any real demand for. Um, while at the same time trying to maintain that they are one of the most successful uh, parts or, you know, moving parts in boxing when they're not. They lie about their pay-per-view buys. Uh, they lie about their ticket sales. Floyd Mayweather and Al Heyman, I think it was last year, were even in a legal dis dis dispute with a guy that helped them with their their little scheme when it came to ticket sales. Um, it's just fake it till you make it. And these are the results of what happened when you're not allowed to fake it till you make it anymore. Now they did have a stronghold on the media. You understand it's excess media. This is the format across all forms of entertainment and platforms in today's world. If you want to put food on your table and if you want access and be in certain places and justify your job, well, now they're making it known that they want people to push uh, the narrative that they want pushed. Um, you know, and it's at the point now where you guys can't really supply that stuff anymore. You have limited fight dates. You're now digging into your own pocket. You know, although some outlets are reporting that you have a deal with Amazon and they could be f finalizing that deal right now again. But as far as this Keith Thurman and uh, uh, Sue fight that it's about to you know, happen here again. It's a meaningless fight, which is in accordance with pretty much everything BBC does. You understand? Uh, there's no belt on the line because the WBO didn't even sanction the fight, and it's a fight that none of us really care about or have asked for. Now, again, I do give them credit. They know how to make characters. You understand? But they don't know how to make Hall of Famers, and they don't know how to make true all-time greats. And again, I'll have someone come in this comment section today, you know, because it's a dime a dozen. And they'll tell me, well, what about Floyd? Well, you got to understand, Floyd, again, was brought up under Bob Arum and Top Rank. Floyd also, his most successful events were when they didn't follow Al Heyman's uh, game plan. You understand they actually worked with other promoters to make the biggest and best fights, the Oscar De La Hoya fight. Uh, again, I don't say this out of hate or malice when I tell you guys this, but Oscar deserves more credit for Floyd's successful career than Al Heyman. I, that, that's just a bottom line fact that you cannot deny no matter what you guys want to say. He had handshake deals when he was in fights with Canelo. Oscar De La Hoya's, those gross and some of his highest pay-per-view buys. Again, you worked with Bob Arum to make the Pacquiao fight. And again, you broke records. You worked with uh, Dana White. And again, you broke records with Conor McGregor. If it, you know, there was none of this, hey, you need to not go to these other companies and you need to cross the street and all this other stuff. Uh, Canelo, again, you know, he is looking for the easier route. Canelo's an easier right, route fighter, just like so many fighters in boxing today, you know, if you can do that and you're trying to take care of your family and things like that, you know, I can't hate on that. But as a sport, again, there's no true merit system in the sport of boxing anymore. It is why, like, my boxing videos are adrenaline. I try not to make this a TMZ drama channel where I sit here and I come with you about news about uh, Jamel Charlo, you know, is drunk in the Bahamas and he's talking some nonsense. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we will address some things like that. I'm not going to say that I'm not guilty of that. But again, I could easily come out with three to five videos a week using that type of format. But I am an old school fight fan. I like to talk about the fights. I like to talk about the matchups. And there's no real fights really going on. Again, I'm not too interested in Devin Haney versus uh, Ryan Garcia and the drama surrounding that. You know, um, and all this other stuff that's going on. Frank Martin Tank Davis and then the next day, the coach comes out and says that's a lie, you know, and 
it, we saw this with Jamel Charlo and Canelo as well. Boxing is now a TMZ drama show today. And it is a fake sport like WWE. These fighters, again, when I watch Canelo fights, when I watch uh, certain PBC fighters fight each other, it's like they have a silent agreement. You understand? Um, it's kind of like spectacle. These guys can throw a thousand punches, but no one's really getting hurt, knocked out or anything else. You know? Um, and again, you got a guy like Terrence Crawford. He's a guy who kind of inhabits the old spirit of the sport where it's the hurt business. He's actually out there to hurt and damage his opponent. He's not there to try to impress judges with volume and things like that of non-impactful punches, you know? And this is why guys are always been weary of a guy like Terrence Crawford, even when it will make them the most money that they ever make that we've seen with guys like Sean Porter, that we've seen with guys like Errol Spence, you know? Crawford just does not fit in the current format that boxing is today, you understand? Which is just theater, uh, which is just entertainment, you understand? Uh, PBC, is a televised series. You understand their guy, Al Heyman. This guy builds up these fighters as industry plants, just like the music industry builds these people and they come up out of nowhere, like Ice Spice and everything else. It's the same format, you understand? And then these guys, again, they will dodge and duck their highest paydays and best legacy fights. You know what I'm saying? Or they'll backtrack. I want to fight this guy. You know, then, okay, well, here's like however many millions of dollars, which will be your highest payday. Never mind, I don't want to. You know, we've seen this before, guys. Um, as far as the integrity and what does this mean for PBC, I mean, it means the same thing that this channel, at least, has always told you guys. I never fall into the popularity contest of things, and I never bandwagon or try to go with the herd when it comes to things. You know what I'm saying? Uh, again, I've given some pretty uh, accurate predictions that were going against the grain all the time. People were just... You know, saying that these guys are going to win because they're the more popular fighter, at least, you know, to the masses or whatever, you know. But we always researched and we always looked into this stuff. Now, DAZN, again, uh, you know, this is just the same thing. Uh, they've already been through this process with Canelo. You had to restructure his contract before. But nobody and nothing is really going on in the sport of boxing today. Like I said, it's just a lot of TMC drama. And it's to the point where these matchmakers are overpaying fighters and they're trying to also do things like ensure that they'll win. And here's Berlinga, here's this guy that we know really don't have a chance, you know, and they're willing to give up that dough as well. So once again, they're validating and kind of being an enabler of this easier route, especially with Canelo Alvarez. Me personally, I don't want to see the Berlinga fight. Uh, Berlinga has already been exposed. Uh, and I'm not just talking in terms of boxing skill, but as a person, this guy has bit people in the ring. He's a dirty fighter. You know, he's one of those spoiled little rotten child children that are willing to do some pretty devious things against people because they can't do things off of their own merit. Yet, that's a prime candidate for a guy to be rewarded a Canelo Alvarez fight. You understand? Um, again, uh, you're ducking the guys that we want to see. Uh, I live here in Phoenix and I would love to see Benavides. Uh, finally get that opportunity against Canelo Alvarez. But again, this is just not the nature of the sport anymore. You know, guys like Sugar Ray Leonard, he already fought some all-time greats before he was even 25 years of age. And today you see this format where like a guy like Deontay Wilder, and I'm just using these guys as, as an example. Uh, even Tank Davis, what legacy fights have you guys really fought? You know, and you guys, uh, you know, Tank Davis, you're now approaching 30. You know, and it was the same with Deontay Wilder. You finally fought someone when you were like 35, 36. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and it's all because it, these guys, they want to provide spectacle. They want to sell you a narrative. They want to sell you uh, some dumb story again. And then we try to act like these guys would have been the greatest ever and beat the Ali's and whoever else of the world of the past. Um, Canelo's just doing what he knows is going to be the easier route. He's going to get paid a, a large sum of money. Is that going to lead to DAZN's success with these type of fights? I think not. They're going to find out, oh, this is why we restructured the contract the last time. You know, you couldn't really uh, bring in what we thought you could bring in. But again, boxing is still in such a desperate state that it's still willing to go on with this, no matter what. Um, as far as the Jamal Charlo fight, and again, he's out here drunk in the Bahamas and things like that. Um, you know, I think that kind of hurt uh, their negotiations or whatever. Again, 
he had a three fight deal and now they're allowing him to leave uh, with two fights still on the table and again Crawford had the rematch clause and Errol Spence even uh, enacted the, the rematch clause not too long after the fight and now you see you know they don't really have the money there you know every the lies have finally caught up to PBC and they can't continue to do the same things that they you know used to get away with in the past um, these companies they've heard word that these guys are just swindlers so again you can fund this stuff. You can use your own money to promote this fight that that nobody's talking about, you know, or nobody never really requested or even wanted, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, it is what it is, man. There's really nothing new to talk about when it comes to this sport. Again, uh, there aren't no real exciting fights on the horizon. Um, Bostic versus uh, Benavidez. I, I mean, it's going to be a nice little learning experience for Benavidez. But again, Bostic has been out of the ring for how long? You know, maybe I haven't kept up with him. Maybe he has been active, guys. I don't know. Uh, boxing, again, it's a very niche sport for a reason. And it's losing interest by the day for a reason. And the way bo these, these suits operate, again, they're always trying to do like a Floyd Mayweather, like, you know, try to rob the bank and not really invest in the sport. And this approach is getting tiresome for a lot of boxing fans. Again, I'm a guy who likes to talk the matchups and the styles. I don't like to talk about the TMC drama aspect uh, of boxing, you understand? <clears throat> I don't like to come on here and hurry up when I hear news that, Jam you know, Jamal Charlo's drunk at the Bahamas. Like, I don't want to hurry up and come out with a little video and get my two cents on that, guys. Uh, we've seen this from all their fighters, Spitz, you know, everybody else. They all have issues with, you know, with the law and things like that, you know. Uh, that stuff kind of gets, you know, for me, boring and tiresome to even have to address. But we've been telling you that system is ran by an effeminate leadership. And when you have effeminate leadership in place, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get a lot of uh, undisciplined type behavior. You're going to see that these guys are out here drinking and doing things getting themselves into trouble. Al Heyman, he's just an effeminate leader. It's just that simple. You know, again, this is a guy who wants outright total control of the situation and authority, but at the same time, doesn't do what's in the best interest uh, of his people. You know what I'm saying? Of his, the people that are signed under him. And then he's out here doing some real crazy shady stuff. You know, he's having these fighters accept stipends and IOUs. You know, and he's just doing all this crazy nonsense, like using this, uh, what he gained from this fight to, uh, you know, hurry up and uh, use it to try to build up this next fight that he's trying to set. He's doing a lot of Bernie Madoff type, just scheming type, uh, Hornswoggler type nonsense. He's just, you know, he's one of those types of businessmen. That this is why he, you don't see him out on the camera because he don't want to be out on the camera he don't want to get arrested and things like that. He owes even Barkley Center money and has dealt treacherously with them. Uh, I'm, I was never impressed with Al Heyman. Again, you guys, you act like mediocrity is greatness today. And this is no different, you know. A guy like Canelo, again, in this watered down era of boxing, he can he's allowed to get away with a lot that he does today in the sport as well. But this is hurting the sport as a whole, guys. Um, and I don't know if making these people fight each other is going to save boxing or help it or assist it, but I don't think it would hurt it, you know, but here I am, you know, I guess one of the biggest fights that are soon going to be, you know, that we'll get to see is Keith Thurman versus uh, Tim Tazu, you know what I'm saying? But nobody, again, never really asked for that nor demanded it. It just came out of nowhere. And for a guy like Al Heyman in his mind and how he's run business, it's classic Al Heyman. Again, who even considered this to be an option? You know what I'm saying? Who even cares? You know, what about, I think the rematch between Spence and Crawford would be better investment than even this fight that you're even coming out of your own pocket to promote and things like that because Amazon ain't trying to give you money yet. And we all saw it. We all saw how janky uh, the press conference was and everything else. Keith Thurman is doing his job to try to hurry up. Uh, and do his best to sell this fight. But again, it's just, uh, who cares at the end of the day? And I'm like, am I even going to go out of my, you know, take my time to even try to stream this fight for me to watch it? And it's not for reasons that I grew up watching the sport. It'll be more so for entertainment factor. Let me just see this loudmouth guy get, you know, knocked out or whatever else. 
Um, this is what the sport's becoming. This is why you got YouTubers even being allowed to infiltrate the sport. You know, um, guys like Floyd Mayweather, Manny Pacquiao, even Cotto, those were some guys that were really uh, doing great things for the sport. Uh, again, Canelo's doing what he's doing, but again, I know they are lying about his numbers. They're lying about his status. Uh, he's even a schemer, you know, among schemers, you know what I'm saying? Listen, you guys know you're not doing nothing, you know, pay me my money, you know, and do what I want. And Canelo gets to have a stronghold on this type of atmosphere of boxing. Again, if Canelo was forced to face people, you know, level playing fields and not all this politics and nonsense that's going on in the background that we've all heard and know to be true. You know, I think the sport would be in a lot better place, even if he took L's just like his mentor, Oscar De La Hoya. Oscar De La Hoya was a high seller and he's known for not basically losing all his big fights. You know what I'm saying? Um, there's been some close calls there. You know, uh, a lot of people felt he beat the Trinidad's and even Shea Mosley at least once. You know, but again, for the most part, this man has lost the majority of his biggest fights, and he still was a seller that these other guys can't even wish they could even approach. I know Tank Davis ain't doing nothing for the sport. I know Canelo's not even really doing nothing for the sport. I don't care about the fake pay-per-view numbers. Uh, and again, this easier route nonsense, it's definitely uh, just tore into the sport, and it's like, why do I even care at this point? You know, I latched on to a few fighters in this sport, you know, um, you know, a few of them, uh, they do bring that, that spirit uh, to the sport. Beater Bev, Crawford, again, they're not there to impress judges. They're there to actually beat and damage their opponent. Uh, back in the olden days, Rome, they knew this. It, it's not hard, you know. We've always said this boxing, you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel for it. It's just like prostitution. It, you don't really need to add new intricate little details or whatever else mechanisms to it. It's a very tried and true sport when you do it correctly. And they're still going against the grain on themselves, you understand, and now they're in this place where they can. You know, they sit here and they're willing to continue to shoot themselves in the foot and everything else. But again, they're more so wanting something that's not even like successful you know where they're losing money constantly and things like that just for appearances and we've talked about this and uh beat this topic you know this dead horse so many times and that's pretty much all i'm doing at this point guys um i will try to come out with a few boxing videos but there's no reason for me to do a film study when canelo's gonna face berlanga or you know what's his name you know, th there's really not much to, for me to do there. You know, it's not a match. None of those match matchups are intriguing, in my opinion. And even Devin Haney versus Ryan Garcia, again, uh, you know, I, I don't think Ryan Garcia is going to win, guys. I think he's going to lose. There's just not much going on. And uh, this is a video that was requested. I hope this gives you <laughs> some entertainment or whatever else. But there's really just not much to report in the sport unless, again, I'm talking about things like Jamal being drunk in the Bahamas and things like that. We will talk to you guys later. Uh, bye.